All right, so if you watched the last video that I posted, you saw me talk about this animation right here. The goal of that animation was to create something that felt kind of inspired by nature, that felt natural, that felt organic, and I talked about all the elements in that animation that solidified that look and that feeling in that design. But honestly, this topic deserves its own video where I can go through a bunch of tips and tricks and processes that help you create things that feel natural, that feel organic, kind of inspired by nature, but still look sci-fi and weird and cool and you can use in your motion graphics. So last week, I went digging for a bunch of inspiration and then I went into trying to figure out tools and tricks in Blender that I can then show you guys how you can get those looks right in Blender with no extra plugins. So we're gonna go through the project files of five style frames that I created and show you how I made those. Now I do wanna preface this that normally I do make step-by-step -step from beginning to end tutorials, that's not what this video is. Today is more of a project overview where I'm gonna show you how I created kind of the bigger points and show you how to make those bigger designs in Blender, but we are gonna gloss over some steps. But don't worry, the next four videos coming out on this channel are all complete step-by-step -step tutorials, so I'm not abandoning that format. If you do want the step-by-step -step tutorials for the project files that I'm gonna be showing you today, all of those are available on my Patreon right now. It's a little over an hour of training and there's just so much stuff in it. Also, last month I uploaded a big collection of tutorials showing you tons of different motion graphics techniques. It's eight tutorials, two and a half hours of training, so much good stuff in those. And if you subscribe, you get access to all of it forever. So if you want to check it out, my Patreon is going to be linked in the description and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. All right, let's start with my favorite one. This one is just so, so cool. You may know about meta balls here in Blender and you, once they touch, they kind of mold into each other and it's a really cool organic look. Unfortunately, you can't use meta balls as instances in Geometry Notes. They won't, uh, they won't interact the way you want them to. And I had found several images that were creating that meta ball look and I just knew I needed to have this as something that you guys can figure out how to create. But I did figure out how to simulate meta ball behavior in Geometry Nodes. So basically in Geometry Nodes, I was able to cluster together a few spheres that will interact with each other. They need to intersect. So what you can do is you can convert all of those spheres into a single volume. Once you convert them back into geometry, you'll now get what looks like a very traditional meta ball behavior. Now, because it's geometry nodes, you get access to everything and you can go back and add the spheres that will go in the middle that are not gonna be converted into a volume. So you get control of all that. And then you get this really, really cool looking structure. And then the next part is just very, very simple. All you have to do next is add a glass material to the outside, add a glossy black material on the inside. Then you can just add an emission material to the background, add a gradient, and it's beautiful. Now, this process is almost perfect. There is an issue though. Because of the way it's built, when I do animate it, you're going to get this geometry flickering because it is reassessing everything and moving around and you cannot get it perfectly smooth yet. You're able to add a subdivision surface modifier. You're able to add a smooth modifier that does help a lot. But unfortunately, because of where we're at, we can't get it perfectly smooth just yet. But I didn't want that to stop me from showing you guys how to create this as at least a style frame and show you how to do it. And then at some point, I'm gonna come back and redo the tutorial. So it's technically not finished. Uh, but if you guys have suggestions, please help me out, put it in the description, and we can make some really cool stuff with this process again. All right, this next one is really, really cool because we're combining volumes, converting geometry, and using textures to go and make really organic looking structures. So very simply, you can just get a volume cube and plug any texture into it that you want. In this case, I just wanna use a noise texture and play with those individual texture patterns and just see what you like. On a broad scale, if you're trying to make things look natural when it comes to distribution, textures, roughness, whatever, the noise texture is the, like, the easiest, absolute easiest no-brainer thing to do to start because noise is absolutely everywhere. If you're new to Blender and you're starting to notice things, look for the noise texture. It's, it's all over the place and you can use it to make things look natural, bringing up the roughness, bringing down the roughness, the detail, all of that stuff. The noise texture is your best friend. Now, once we have that texture and figure out what pattern we like, we can go ahead and go right into making our materials. Let's create a really cool Voronoi pattern. All you have to do is just get two Voronoi nodes. Once they're on top, just switch one over to smooth F1 and then plug them into a subtract node. In this case, I want to have a glowing element in the design. So I'm just gonna plug it into the emission and you can see 
how cool that looks. The thing is, I don't like that the Voronoi pattern is spread all over the model. I just don't think that's very tasteful. And I don't think it really, it, it's very, I don't know, the design, I don't like the design. What I want is to distribute it in random parts of the model. So we can go back to our best friend, the noise texture and get a really quick distribution that will kind of turn it on and turn it off in different parts of our model. So we're combining Voronoi, for our light, we're combining noise textures to get it to distribute very organically. And then all we have to do now is get subsurface materials. Subsurface materials are another one of those no brainer, easy things to make something feel organic and natural. Our skin, leaves, different other natural materials are all subsurface. And all you have to do is just do a couple sliders, let the light kind of shine in and you get something really, really cool. At the points where the light is hitting the subsurface and there's emission there, it really makes the emission look like it's inside of the object. And I think it's just a really cool effect. And all of these little bits and pieces are totally animatable. You can make some really, really cool looking animations with it. This one is inspired by kind of the way that fish eggs cluster together. And I wanted to combine that idea with mixing together materials that feel natural. So transmissive materials, subsurf materials, and trickle in a little bit of emission. Now in geometry nodes, if you want objects to fit inside of a certain space, you can actually take that object you want, convert it to a volume, and then you can distribute points inside of that volume. Then you can use this special node to make sure everything doesn't intersect. If the objects aren't moving, they're not gonna intersect. Once you start animating those points, they will then intersect. Blender still does not have the easiest way to get like particles to not hit each other. I, I feel like we're getting close though. I feel like it's going to happen for us soon. Now at this point in the design, it's really just going to come into massaging it to make, to try to get all of these objects to make sure they're really hugging together and not like they're about to fly off. Again, this is kind of mimicking the way that fish eggs kind of stay together in this little cluster. Two very common materials you're going to see in nature, ones that are kind of clear, you can kind of see through. And like I mentioned, subsurface materials. You can't really see through them, but you can actually see that light is penetrating into them and it really looks cool. So in geometry nodes, we can just get the shading to randomly sort of distribute glass material, subsurface material, and really get that to feel nice. And then just to make this animation feel a little bit more dreamy, I wanted to add just a few objects having an emission material on them. As I was designing it, I'm like, this kind of feels inspired by fireflies. This feels kind of gives that dreamy feeling of fireflies in a forest, but in this case, designed within this particular design. Then it really just came to getting a light to just kind of kiss the top, just give a nice highlight at the top, a very high contrast design. It really, really looks cool. Uh, most of the time, I'm usually doing volumes and making it real feel real spacey. But in this case, I actually like the fact that it's a, pl a plain background. It feels just cool and microscopic, and it is a really, really beautiful composition. I'm, I'm, I'm really in love with this one. All right, let's talk about this one. It is entirely a procedural material. Again, my goal in this video is to give you a nice set of tools that help you create organic looking animations. And at some point, Procedural materials are going to come up. You're going to want to learn how to make them. And this is a really cool one that you can kind of piece together and take things or just apply to other things. And it's it's a really nice one. Now, the first step is going to be creating our displacement. We're actually taking that Voronoi pattern that we used in that big volume structure, and we're actually just going to invert it so we can get those randomly placed kind of globs. And it looks really, really cool. You can even use this pattern to make a collection of rocks. So imagine like you're using it and they have all these different rocks and you can apply materials on top of it to make them look more like rocks. So it's really, really usable in nature. Let me pause and say, the noise texture is one of the easiest ways to get things to look organic. The Voronoi texture is right behind it in terms of just the easiest way to get things that look nice. The Voronoi texture has a lot of organic patterns. It also has a lot of kind of hard surface patterns. So the hard surface, not very organic, but if you're using the right patterns with Voronoi and you're applying them to different things, you can get really, really quick, very organic looking things. So definitely play around with this texture if you're new to Blender and you want to see, hey, how can I play with this? Really just play around with it and see what it has to offer. So once we have our pattern figured out, we can go ahead and add some color to this thing. Now, quite often in nature, we're seeing gradients a lot uh, on flowers and uh, green greenery, shrubbery. Is that the right word? You're seeing it on flowers, basically. So we're just going to use a simple gradient that helps distinguish the bottom to the top and really solidifies that natural 
weird organic feeling. Now after that, I wanna go ahead and further that natural look by breaking up how often some of those Voronoi globs are going to be visible. So just like in the volume structure video, we're gonna use a set of nodes to actually break up that Voronoi pattern. We're gonna be using noise just to get it to look really cool. And now when you're done, there's many ways that you can animate this with the W of the Voronoi, the W of the noise, the emission, all of this stuff to really make it feel like this weird living glob and, and because it's a procedural material you can apply this to any model a face a hand an icosphere anything procedural it can go in whatever you want all right this last one is actually animated because it's just so easy to render um but it's less inspired by nature and just more inspired by sort of something that feels soft and satisfying and still kind of natural again not hard surface or, or, or grungy or anything like that now I'm starting with an icosphere here in geometry nodes. And the whole point of it was to show you how to very quickly create hexagonal patterns. You will find off and on in nature hexagonal patterns. They do show up sometimes and it's really cool when you can find it. If you can build it in geometry nodes, you have more fun. So next we can just go ahead and extrude all of those faces and you'll notice the edges are really, really sharp. So the way that we can kind of solidify this kind of plushy, squishy toy is just simply subdividing it. And then we can use a noise texture to randomly push up and push down all of those different faces to get a really interesting animation. And really, really quickly, you can have something that looks just really fun of all of these, this one actually got the best reactions on Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram. I preview a lot of my stuff there, so if you wanna check it out. Uh, but you guys loved this one, which I was surprised by, because it's the easiest one to build out of all of those. Again, you could check out that full tutorial on Patreon. Um, but love this one, very easy, a good intro geometry notes tutorial, and that is all five of these style frames. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you can kind of take a stack of all of these little techniques and add them randomly to your own projects to get something that feels really natural. Honestly, there's so much more to talk about here and I might even make a second video with even more complex topics on this and really dive deeper into making things feel weird and you know, natural and gross. Um, so it's a cool topic and there's a lot more to dive into it, but thank you guys for watching. Again, I have four tutorials coming up this month. So if you don't like these sort of compilation style videos, um, these are definitely good for intermediate or pro users, but I got some intro tutorials coming up in the next couple of days. So look out for those again, look out for the Patreon. If you want to check it out, see all of these tutorials and all the extra stuff that I'm posting there, you can check it out linked in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.